Have you ever gone out in the morning and realized you left the garage door open all night? Yeah, me too. Follow what I show you how to do in this video, and that'll never happen to you again. Ready? Right now. To make this magic happen, we're gonna need a few things. A Wemos D1 Mini, a relay shield, a reed switch, uh, some small gauge wire, and of course, home assistant. And of course, home assistant. If you don't have home assistant set up yet, you'll have to do that first. Plenty of other people have videos about how to set up home assistant. I definitely recommend Ben at Bruh Automation. Here's a link to a great video about how to set that up. All right, first let's set up the hardware. I love these little Wemos D1 Mini boards. Uh, they're cheap, they're tiny, and with this little guy you can control just about anything in your house. This time we're gonna use a relay shield. This is made to go right on top of your Wemos board, like that. Here comes a wiring diagram. Okay, we need to connect the D1 pin and the five volt pin to the relay. I tried other pins, uh, but they didn't all work. But D1 definitely works, so use D1. And then we wanna connect the D8 pin and the three volt pin to the reed switch. After we get this setup mounted, we will connect the garage door to the contacts on the relay we'll use the normally open contacts. We're going to use MQTT to get messages between Home Assistant and the Wemos board. That's the same system that we use to control the lights. If you haven't set up MQTT yet, uh, it's actually pretty simple. It's a little intimidating if you're a guy like me that doesn't have a coding background, uh, but here's a great video on how to do it. Here's the Arduino sketch. In this section right here, you put your own information for your MQTT broker. You put your IP address and your username and password. If you have more than one garage door, then these two topics will need to be unique. You'll need a separate Wemos and Relay for each garage door. I'll be nice and include a second Arduino sketch in the GitHub page so you don't have to go through and change all this. The way this sketch is written, the garage door will show closed when the reed switch is open or away from the magnet. If you want to set up yours differently, then you'll have to change this zero to a one and this one to a zero. Okay, I think that's it. It's a pretty simple sketch. Uh, now you can just upload it to your Wemos board and can move on to the Home Assistant side. Pro tip, for the Arduino IDE, always make sure that your libraries and your board managers are up to date. If someone gives you a sketch like this and I used a more updated library than what you have, the sketch won't work. The Arduino IDE is pretty good about letting you know when you've got libraries that can be updated. Okay, in Home Assistant, we're going to use the MQTT cover service. In the GitHub page for this video, the section that you'll need is called partialcover.yaml. In your configuration.yaml file, add this section here. If you only have one garage door, you can just delete this second part. Now go up to your customize section in the configuration.yaml file and add these lines here. One more thing to do in the configuration.yaml file, uh, add this line here to reference the groups.yaml file if you haven't already. So if you already have your groups.yaml file, then add this section here. If you don't, then just make a new file called groups.yaml and put this part in it and save it in the same folder as your configuration.yaml file. Again, you can copy all this from the GitHub page that's linked in the description. Every time you make a change to the configuration file, you need to restart Home Assistant. New versions have a check config button that lets you know if your configuration file is okay, and then you're ready to restart. Okay, you've got your sketch loaded up on your Wemos and you've made the right changes to your configuration file and your groups file for Home Assistant. Now we're ready to test your hardware. And this is what should happen. And you see the change. The garage door looks like it's open on the, M, on the little uh, icon and the arrow only gives you the choice to close it. Okay, now if the door is, well, whichever way it is, once you get the arrow, you click uh, on the arrow and you'll hear the relay click. <laughs> that was the kids yelling at each other. And here's the relay clicking. Just like that. So now you know it works. Okay, now I got my other one set up. And you can see, just in the garage, it's closed. My only option is open. I 
activate the switch and it changes. Now I can close the door if I want and the icon shows it open and then when I click the button you hear the relay. Beautiful! Everything's working. It should work just like that. If it doesn't, then look for any differences between my setup and your setup. I've been surprised sometimes how seemingly unrelated systems can mess each other up. So if you have anything that's different from the way I have it set up, that's probably where your problem is. Uh, this is a good time to mention the Home Assistant Discord channel. If you haven't heard of Discord, it's an app for communication. The Home Assistant Discord channel is a great place to go to get help. Uh, there's over 400 people online there at any given time. That's one of the first places that I go when I get hung up. Okay, if that all worked, then it's time to go out in the garage and mount your hardware. Everybody's garage door is probably a little bit different. I decided to put everything up by the garage door opener uh, because there's already a plug up there. Uh, it makes a short distance for the connection to the relay and you can put the reed switch. I mounted mine on the underside of this track. The reed switch came with a little magnet, but I had a hard time mounting the magnet that it came with. So I just used a different ceramic magnet that I had and hot glued the heck out of it. If you do choose to mount yours uh, on the track like I did, be prepared. There's a lot of motion. That, that track goes up and down and up and down when the garage door opens and closes. So you might have to be pretty creative in how you secure it. To connect the garage door opener to the relay, you need to find the two contacts on your garage door opener that go to the switch or the button that you push to open it. The easiest way to find those contacts is by getting a little jumper wire and just start connecting two contacts and see which one opens the door. For me, on both my garage door openers, it was the two contacts on the left hand side. Now run a wire from each of those contacts to your relay. Connect one of those wires to the common contact and the other one to the normally open or NO contact. That should do it. Now plug in your Wemos and see if it works. <laughs> All right, now you should be able to see your garage doors on Home Assistant, and you can tell if they're open or closed. Now to keep from leaving them open all night, we'll set up an automation in Home Assistant. If you have the latest version of Home Assistant, they've got a user interface now for automations. To set up this automation, the trigger will be the time of day that you want Home Assistant to check the status or the state of your garage doors. For me, I made it 10 o'clock. The condition that you want Home Assistant to look for is whether or not your garage door is open. And then the action is to call the MQTT cover service to close the door. Now it says open here, but don't be fooled. With a garage door, there isn't really an open and a close command. There's just an activate command, and if it's open, it will close, and if it's closed, it will open. So I just used one word and left it at open, regardless of which way the door is actually going. So that's it. The first question I got when I showed this to my mother-in-law was, is that going to come down and smash one of the kids? It doesn't override any of the safety features that you already have in your garage door. So if something's in the way, the garage door won't close, just like it does now. This is probably one of the most useful features of Home Assistant for people who are even just casually interested in home automation. Hopefully this was helpful to you. Send me any comments. I'm happy to try and help. Okay, you know the drill, like, subscribe, click the bell, all that. Adios. Guess that's it.